Hi, everybody. I suck at intros. <laughs> no wonder every video starts with, hey. Um, hi, we're back to another tier list video, a chill session where I talk about my favorites of the round. This round, of course, was full of absolute bangers. Um, and some that were just, you know, all right. But uh, so, yeah, we'll absolutely just get right into the mix with it. I think round four was actually probably one of my favorite rounds so far. First up is the uh, Rune Knight fighter. The Rune Knight is just insane, okay? And I'll go ahead and tell you, I think I'm going to put their ass. Yeah, I got to do it. Rune Knight's goaded with the sauce. There's no fighter that gets more utility out of abilities than I than the Rune Knight, I think. Your ability to grow, but also on top of that, all your, your chaining and your uh, barbarian-like ability with all the different uh, runes you can get. It makes the Rune Knight like incredibly versatile in terms of not just playstyle, but also how diverse you are in combat. And that's kind of incredible for the class that's just supposed to be like, I bonk stuff good. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean like the Rune Knight is just, it's so good. It's, it's insanely good. Um, I would even venture to say it's like, yeah, it's right there. Maybe it'll look a little better right here. They're pretty close. I don't know, <laughs> but yeah, the Rune Knight is, is too good. Almost. It's so fun to play. It's so fun, uh, to, uh, use those abilities out of combat. It's, it's just, it's got everything you would want. Um, as a fighter and it's it kind of just slaps man it's it's rad as hell uh next up is the sun soul monk and i'll be honest with you this one is kind of tough um the sun soul monk has its day in the sun <laughs> sorry the sun soul monk it, it can be good and with the right build and some great stats like it can be good I think the problem with it is when you compare it to other monks, it comes out really short, and I just don't think um, many of the abilities actually work the way it's supposed to. The Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide was just kind of like weirdly weak anyway for some reason. Um, and I'm gonna put the I'm I'm actually gonna put the Sun Soul Monk in the lowest tier so far with the still like though. Um, and the reason being is that it's not so bad that it's useless. I had a Sun Soul Monk in one of my games and she did really, really well. Now, I will say to preface that, uh, we had a cleric, a bard, and a ranger. Um, and bard and ranger aren't the most powerful classes in the game. Cleric's great, but... Um, so, yeah, she felt strong comparatively to that. She had great stats and... Uh, she had some good items to kind of back her up. So there was there was a little bit of help there. I think what's really wrong with the Sun Soul is that a lot of your abilities take a ton of key, uh, which doesn't really make sense. Um, just, just allow those abilities to work without key at least once. And even your Searing Sunburst and Sun Shield at later levels, they just don't do enough. I mean, I talked about how it's very DBZ inspired, and it absolutely is, but even if you're not going for that, um, give me something crazy at level 17. We're fighting gods and shit at that point, right? The fact that the sun shield just lets you become like a light bulb, uh, and then like if you get hit, they take some damage. Honestly, that's just terrible. The astral self monk at that level has like a full stand that could like break you down and use like a million attacks which is incredible like that's just insane so it's just I, I don't know what happened it's just not well put together your radiant sun bolts at lower levels are okay um making a ranged uh monk uh kind of makes sense in that way but i think if you're gonna go that route um there might be just a better way to do it in general, like make like a ninja with darts and kind of go Kensei or something like that. That's kind of cool. Or just play the bullseye. Ha 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 ha. That's, I, I did that. But honestly, I mean, like when it comes to Monk, Monk has some weird sump classes. I don't think it's bad as a class all around. Like the Astral Self is still pretty banger. But there are some of these subclasses that definitely need fixes. Um, and if you, if you want to see that, I mean, Bone Wizard actually has some great videos on how to fix Monk. So check those out as well. 
Next up is the Phantom. I'm going to put the Phantom way down here for just a second. Uh, the Phantom is really cool. Uh, I actually think it's one of the more unique rogue subclasses. Your Tokens of the Departed and Whales from the Grave ability are both uh, great. I really love at the end as well, um, you can deal that necrotic damage. I think it came out to, if I remember the math, it was like 15 D10 at one point like that's bananas amount of um amount of dice to be rolling the only thing i could wish for really would be like maybe a few more ghost themed abilities the whispers of the dead is cool um but you know it's not like super ghosty um which i guess i was just kind of looking forward to however by the time you get to 13 the ghost walk ability is very much ghosty so i guess it does level out a little bit i i mean i don't know the the phantom is fantastic i mean i'm gonna say that go off the bat um i'm gonna give it the credit of right there feels about right yeah i do think the standout ability is obviously the tokens of the departed with this one uh, where you get that little trinket and it keeps coming back to you that's cool and the fact that you can trade a trinket to do the whales from the grave ability um all that is like all that's dope like you get a thing you can spend a thing um you know it, it works really well for the phantom so i i genuinely think the phantom is really good but yeah no i feel comfortable with it in fantastic i, I think that's i think that's cool all right moving on Next up is the Path of the Zealot. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the Path of the Zealot is super great. Um, is it near perfect? No. Um, I do think you start to fall off with your Zealous stuff later. I'm going to put it about right cheer. Yeah, I'm comfortable with that. But out of all the good stuff with it, um, your Divine Fury is awesome. Extra damage on a Barbarian, exactly what you want. Your Warrior of the Gods uh, is fine. Being able to get like a Revivify off or a Raise Dead like more easily is cool, but like kind of, you know, situational. Really when this subclass kicks off is your Zealous Presence and Rage Beyond Death, where you can do the like the big like hercules anime scream and like empower your friends and then yeah you don't die at level 14 which is insane that's awesome i i absolutely love that i kind of wish in a way it came sooner level 14 is late in the game uh, most campaigns end at level 10 and the game's really not even balanced past level 12 that well right so you know getting to level 14 is kind of not gonna happen for very many people and i don't think that the rage beyond death thing is so insanely strong that it couldn't come earlier um maybe this is just a dick pick for me and that's fine um it's it's super cool and i love the idea of it a lot right like you're just it doesn't matter if you're dead or not, you're going to keep going until your rage ends. Basically, hit points don't matter for you at a certain point. And then, even if you're dead, they can hit you with a revivify, you come back immediately, or they can throw you, if you didn't lose all your, um, if you didn't lose all your death saves, they can hit you with like a healing word and then you're back anyway. I mean, all that's like super dope, right? But it comes when you're, like, already fighting dragons and shit. I feel like it would be more useful if it came, like, a little bit earlier and you can, like, use that a little more often. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's going to sound like a nitpick. I'm just comparing it to other classes. Like, seventh level spells for, like, a druid or a wizard at that level are insane, right? So is your ability to uh, essentially just ignore death saves that crazy? No, I thematically I love it genuinely thematically i love it but um yeah i think you know just like if we're comparing things um it's it's good it's not go to with the sauce i hope that makes sense all right this one is gonna be controversial i can already tell <laughs> but uh the great old one warlock is just great not anything more um uh i'll even go a step further 
yeah it's probably about right there um yeah the great old one warlock is is fine um it's it's a pretty good subclass um i know a lot of people love it i think it's gotten hit hard by the player's handbook effect which is just it's gotten passed up by subclasses that have come after it pretty pretty crazily things like your entropic ward or entropic i don't i don't know i I don't know words are really are really cool. It's it's silvery barbs, right? But you can only do it once. Th that should be tied to your charisma modifier or your proficiency bonus for sure. It's kind of the same thing with create thrall ability. I don't know if this is like an accident, but it says to touch an incapacitated humanoid. And I'm pretty sure I joked about it in the video, but that, you know, what is incapacitated? Like asleep? So that should definitely be like, you can just try that on somebody to dominate them, right? Um, and the reason that's weird, it's like, okay, so how do you get them incapacitated, right? Do you put them to sleep? Well, uh, that's weird because you don't have the sleep spell. Um, and even if you hit them with something like a dominate person they're not incapacitated they're walking around and listening to you so it's like it becomes a little bit of a of a fight for how to make this stuff work you got to rely on your team um to kind of back up some of these um you got to rely on your team to kind of back up some of these abilities and while i think the spell list is good uh and the awakened mind ability is also good kind of already get this by just like playing a kalash tar and kind of doing you know there's kind of other ways to to get this effect it, the great like, again the great old one is cool and it was probably much better when it first came out uh but it has been lapped uh so to speak by other warlocks uh pretty heavily in fact um yeah, great old world. Moving your ass down here. That feels about right. Because I do love the genie more. Sorry. Don't kill me. Next up is the Scribes Wizard. Scribes Wizard is near perfect. I love the damn book. Holy shit, is that thing fun. I like that they went all out and did a wizard's wizard. Right, it's a guy who's got a spell book and he likes using his spell book. The spell book does stuff. It's like a little critter that runs around with you. It can talk to you, kind of, because <laughs> it's it's a little loose on what what it's a little loose on if it actually can do that. It's considered awakened, right? Which like awakened is like like if you awaken a bush, the bush can walk around, but the bush can't necessarily like talk to you unless you can't speak with plants you, you get what i'm saying um all i'm getting at is that this shit is rad i mean you're gonna have scrolls and you're gonna have your little book flying around and casting spells for you I, 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 what he did yeah also the ability to just not take damage with your one with the word like way later on that's what you need that is a that is a wizard's shit right there because you're constantly getting hit so uh your ability to shrug off damage is weirdly um just a great bonus on top of a already very good set of abilities and i like that this guy like I, when i think of a when i think of an order of the scribes wizard i almost think of like a librarian who's like running around looking for like new spells uh, to fill up his book or maybe he's looking for like ancient magical secrets and uh, his book uh, comes to life to help him out I, I don't know but it's it's there's a very unique uh, story you can make up with a scribes wizard and I think that's very very cool so oh yeah where is it uh, it's like way up here 100% uh, artillerist I think that I think that works. I, I was gonna swap them, but actually, I think I like the swashbuckler just a little bit more. But yes, um, that is that is red for sure. Okay, so this um, I'm gonna get hate for this for sure. Profane soul is poopy doo doo garbage trash. <laughs> oh God, guys, I am so sorry about that. I know there's a lot of people who love the profane soul. It does not do anything for me. 
I genuinely think it's not good enough as like a warlock-ish kind of Gish character to be even like in the running for Gish. Uh, and the spells you get from it aren't good enough to justify taking a whole subclass to get them. Uh, you can do this much quicker and much easier by doing like a hex blade and then some sort of sorcerer multi-class than you could with the profane cell. We don't get we don't get third level spells until level 13, and we don't get like our free casting of haste, which is probably the best one on that list, until level 15, which is uh, holy crap, that's late. Also, some of the stuff on this just doesn't make sense. Like, the Archfey gets slow. Uh, the Fathomless gets Lightning Bolt. I guess I can see it. The Fiend gets Fire Bolt, and the Great Old One gets Haste. I feel like that should be, like, Phantasmal Killer or something. I don't, I don't know. And the Hexblade gets Blank. The Hexblade should be getting Haste here. Or, or I, I just genuinely don't understand what they were thinking when they made this one i get that it's supposed to be like a half of a warlock right i i just don't think it works honestly um i just don't think it works at all profane souls just kind of sucks and i'm sorry for those who like it because i understand that you fall in love with your characters and it's sad when somebody says that they're subclass sucks but i think if you're gonna do anything go for a dip and even then like just go hexblade hexblade hexblade's gonna give you more it's gonna do more using your charisma modifier for your for your bonks is red like but all in all it's real shit um and i'm really sorry if that uh hurts your feelings but i love you uh next up is the aberrant mind and the aberrant mind is near perfect in my opinion it's one of the best sorcerers hands down maybe the best sorcerer uh and the only thing i don't like about it is that the 14th level ability uh gives you like ice stalks and make and turns you into slime but <laughs> um that, that, that's a silly nitpick uh the aberrant mind is just like you have a great spell list. Uh, the telepathic speech is also very cool. Your psionic sorcery ability to let you use sorcery points instead of a spell slot is fucking insane. The reason it's insane is that you can pull any divination or enchantment spell from the sorcerer, warlock, or wizard list and essentially cast it very, very, very cheaply. And since you don't have to do verbal, somatic, or material components, you do not get fucking counterspelled, right? Oh, buddy, that's crazy. This just lets you, like, throw suggestions out like crazy, as though they were all subtle spells right so you can just be like hey suggest you do this or like hey dominate you like this it's this is crazy right this is stupid that psionic sorcery puts it over the top um and i think honestly we're probably getting into like the mid tier of that uh it feels good about right there like right above twilight cleric twilight cleric's cool throwing out spells they can't be counterspelled that cheaply fucking amazing uh, next up is the Swarm Keeper. Swarm Keeper is good. Swarm Keeper is good. Um, how good though? Um, it's gonna go in fantastic. I'll figure out where in just a second. Um, yeah, I mean, it's the not the bees subclass, but uh, the bees fucking bring it, right? So everything you get in this works well together right your writhing tide works with your mighty swarm your swarming dispersal works with your works with both of those and your new spells are pretty good together right so that's that's already cool you add that with the ability to marshal especially if you go like a bow uh where you can stay out of danger uh but this could work well with even like a Marshall, like a straight up in the fight kind of ranger but you're looking at a incredibly strong player no matter what and it doesn't take you that long to come online 
right? You're doing cool stuff with your mage hand uh, that's like just bees <laughs> pretty early on. Once you get to the writhing tide and you can hover uh, and like have a flying speed, that's gonna be that's gonna be a game changer. Um, so if you can make it to level seven with this, you are probably one of the best rangers in terms of sheer uh, utility, right? Um, you know, I still think the Gloom Stalker and the Drake Warden are cooler in concept, but like you are you are dope. There's just no doubt about it. Um, and I think I'm going to put you, let's see, Grave Cleric, yeah, Glory, yeah, Totem, yeah, that feels about right, right there. No, Astral Self is better. Yeah, Hexblade's, I like Hexblade more too, but that's a good spot, I think. Well, Lord Bar is so cool. I'm going to keep changing my mind on this. It's somewhere in there. <laughs> uh, Wildfire Druid. Wildfire Druid is also near perfect. Um, the Wildfire Druid is incredible because of your Wildfire Spirit. Yes, having a fire-themed Druid is cool, but that Wildfire Spirit is just insane in terms of what you can do with it the fiery teleportation ability ups you by a lot right um so just as a reminder uh you can teleport you and every creature within five feet of you as an action but not your action your wildfire spirits action right you can teleport 15 feet away but you can teleport constantly right each round you're just bouncing around with your wildfire spirit uh and doing damage from all over the field and you can take your buddies so that you don't hit them with the fire so it's like if you want to get into shit you're in it if you need to move the fighter around you can do that you can put it on the back of one of the characters and organize with uh your party where you want to send them and like you know bounce the rune knight around that's insane this is, this is really good. This is really, really, really good. The idea of like flaming death and revival is pretty cool as well. I like the whole like Phoenix theming of the wildflower druid. Flower? Wildflower druid? The wildfire druid. Um, and it's like, it's, it's cool. It's, I mean, I'm not as in love with it as I would be like maybe some other things. I think really it comes down to, um your abilities with your wildfire spirit being so fun um and then on top of that um like way way later on if you do get into like 14th level blazing revival to put you back up to half your hit points just by like eating your wildfire spirit is is that's that's awesome honestly so i, I don't know you're doing great so i'm gonna put you like I'm going to put you like right here. That feels comfy. Yeah. That feels good. Oath of Ancients Paladin is goaded with the goddamn fucking sauce. Oh my god. I, I've i been hovering around this subclass for forever and I kind of knew about it. I did not dig into it enough. I thought at first like, oh, it's the nature paladin. Like it's the... It's the one that does like tree shit and you get plant growth. That's cool. But no, no, the aura of warding to make you and your friends resistant to the damage of spells. You take a half damage from all spells. I fucking hate you. <laughs> no, <laughs> as a DM, that is the most frustrating shit. I've ever heard and I cannot wait to play it myself. <laughs> I mean, yes, getting all the way to like an elder champion is also incredibly cool at level 20, but if you were to multi-class this with the totem barbarian and take the bear so that you're resistant to everything but psychic damage, then you go aura of warding so you're resistant to all spell damage. I just, uh, that's stupid. That's stupid. It's stupid. Now, technically speaking, and I know, I know what you're going to say. Resistance doesn't stack, right? So 
If you're a tiefling and you're resistant to fire damage and you get the aura of warding and you're resistant to spell damage, getting hit by a fireball does not technically quarter the damage. But you're no fun and I don't like you. <laughs> That's not true. As a DM, the way I have ruled that before is that you, if you have multiple sources of resistance, you planned for that. And I will allow you uh, to keep those multiple forms of resistance. So it will quarter the damage. And I feel like, for the most part, that's how people go. And that's how I feel like it should go, honestly. Um, because, I mean, like, if you think about it, like, if you... Okay, so um, your aura of warding is a different ability. So if you are a tiefling ancient's paladin and you have resistance to fire damage. Uh, your aura of warding is giving you resistance to the damage from the spell itself. That's a different ability, right? So you, sh in my opinion, you should be able to stack those. The book says different, I, I understand. Uh, but, you know, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Um, and then, I mean, like, yeah, your Undying Sentinel ability at level 15, you just walk right back up, and you can't die of old age, and you can't be aged magically. It's, what are we doing here? This is maybe one of, if not the best paladin. In fact, uh, defensively speaking, I'm going to put it so high up here. Um, yeah, that feels about right. That feels good. Um, and yeah, I need to go back and play this in Baldur's Gate 3, because I've heard a lot of people make Carlock a, uh, Oath of Ancients Paladin as well as a totem, and she just walks through shit, and that sounds, that sounds dope. That sounds dope as all hell. That sounds so goddamn cool. <laughs> uh, the Trickery Cleric. Trickly, trickery Cleric is great. Um, there's a few reasons why I'm not putting it higher. It also stems from the fact that you're getting... Um, the player's handbook effect with the trickery cleric. Things have passed it up uh, as it has come out. Uh, however, the invoke duplicity is cool. That's kind of the main thing about this subclass. It's cool. I'm not going to take that away from it. Is it amazing? I wish there was more you could do with it. I wish you could talk through it. I wish you could, uh, you know, maybe interact with it. Maybe like a mage hand where it has a limited number of things it can do. Um, but, you know, it's, it's... It's okay. It's fine. The Channel Divinity Cloak of Shadows, um, it's just kind of bad. Like, just give me the invisibility spell. It It's better. It you know it lasts longer um and then once you get into later later levels with improved duplicity it's kind of too late um for the most part i'm not it's not bad um and like depending on the player i mean laura bailey in critical role has made the trickery cleric as famous as it is probably right and then shadow heart in bg3 um has also kind of like improved its rep a little bit. Actually, Shadowheart probably killed it. I think a lot of people, <laughs> she's not optimized at the beginning of the game. So I think a lot of people are like, this subclass fucking sucks. Uh, and then they kind of realize that like, oh, it's because the game was weird about it and didn't <laughs> kind of make her uh, work as well as she could have. Uh, anyway, that's whatever. Um, so the Trickery Cleric like can be, can be great. It can be in like dominate person, modify memory, polymorph, dimension door, dispel magic, blank. You have a lot of great spells to work with. Um, I wish that the abilities were better. A, tr a, a cleric as a true caster is pretty much universally dope. Um, I wish that your abilities played more into the I'm a silly little Billy and I'm going to do weird shit, right? So that's it. Um, and I'm going to put you like right here. Next up is the alchemist. And sorry to say it, folks, the alchemist needs work. That should probably no, be no surprise to anyone. And something I forgot to mention in the video, which I feel bad that I forgot this for some reason. 
the worst thing about it is actually kind of its main ability, right? Um, the experimental elixir being random at first makes no sense to me. Um, if you spend a spell slot, uh, you can actually pick which one you make. But I like that even less, okay? You get a random one unless you spin something you need to get one that's better? What? You know what I'm saying? So that should, I mean, it should never have been a random table, in my opinion. It, it, that may bother me more than it should, honestly. Um, but I do think it is a big flaw with the Alchemist. As far as the other stuff, getting lesser restoration and greater restoration later on, that's pretty cool. You know, later level spells are always fun and the fact that you're one of the few artificers that gets something like heal i think the problem is that we're not doing enough cool artificer shit and that's what you want funnily i think the mutant weirdly does this a little bit better and i have problems with the mutant as well so yeah where are we what are we doing here you know what i'm saying it's it's really 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 tough Unfortunately, I'm just not in love with the alchemist at all, and uh, I think it I think it could use work. Maybe that'd be something I could fix and make my own. Maybe. No promises. Uh, and this is gonna piss everybody off, but the eloquence bard is near perfect. Um, <laughs> you guys hate bards, and <laughs> I don't get it. I love bards. I think that they uh, add a lot to the game. And I had a lot of people saying a similar thing. And I understand what you're getting at, okay? And I want you to hear me out before you get mad. A lot of people were saying that this pigeonholes campaigns into a just let the bard talk to them, right? But I think that becomes more of a problem with the DM and the campaign than it does with the eloquence bard. And I'll tell you why, okay? Not every NPC should be persuadable, okay? If a guard is looking after a fort that's like heavily, heavily fortified, nobody walking up should be able to get a persuasion check to try to talk them down, okay? Especially after like level six or something like that. Okay, it doesn't matter if the bard rolls a 40 on their persuasion or deception check, that should not happen, right? And I think that people often treat persuasion and deception checks kind of like mind control. And, you know, people are tired. They don't want to necessarily have to think, okay, what is this guy going to think about this situation and blah, 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 blah. I understand all of that, right? But I think it, I think it does kind of come back to the persuasion check should be more of a situational and much less common of a thing. That way, not only do they feel impactful, but when you use it, it makes a lot of sense, right? So one of the comments that said, oh no, this pigeonholes you, you can't do anything with it. It just means the bard talks the bad guy into giving you all his gold and then you win the game because blah, 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 blah. D shut up. No, you're wrong. Okay, I'm sorry, you're wrong. You can't walk up to the evil lich and be like, don't be an evil lich. You can't actually Taku no Jutsu. I did make that joke, but you can't actually Taku no Jutsu every NPC and every bad guy. Um, it's more like, hey, okay, you can't get into this facility, but you can talk to a couple of the guards who got drunk uh, at the tavern and convince them to or smartly convince them to let you in on secrets of the castle. So maybe you could sneak in another way. Or uh, if you're having problems with like a town mayor, you could like sneakily talk people around the, uh, around the village into like hating this guy uh, and spread like little deceptions and little rumors. That's kind of what you're supposed to be able to do. Okay. Now, when it comes to like the straightforward uh, mind control -y shit like suggestion and dominate person the unsettling words ability is where you are but that's a whole different can of worms people are constantly saying this is just let's just walk into things and let the bard talk to them and that's just not that just doesn't make sense for a campaign okay so 
yeah, I I don't know where this kind of stigma came from. That's not how I play stuff. I definitely give weight to pers persuasion and intimidation and deception checks, but I give way more weight to them when it makes more sense. Does that make sense? Okay, that's the end of my diatribe. I like the Eloquence Bard a lot. The Unsettling Words ability is probably your best ability, period. Being able to subtract from saving throws is fucking baller. Um, and I'm going to put you fairly high. Like, I'm going to put you, like, right here. I think that's a comfortable place. Yeah, let's put him right here. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you guys are going to kill me now. <laughs> but I think that's a comfortable place for the Eloquence Bard. Um... So yeah, that is my list for round four. Round five is already underway with Fathomless of Kraken Week. I went ahead and got that one out uh, so that, you know, I wouldn't be behind and I could play in Kraken Week. But other than that, uh, there's a lot of bangers, a lot of bangers coming up in round five. I hope you guys are awesome and that you have an excellent, excellent time. Please, please vote in the polls. I always want to hear what you're saying and comment your favorite, favorite subclasses you want to see in the future. That way I know what to put in next. Um, but other than that, uh, you guys, you guys rock and I hope you, uh, I hope you have a good day. And if you want to yell at me about stuff, uh, you can, but I will be sassy back probably. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>